So we've done numerical indexing. Now let's move on to indexing using our range operators. Uh, recall that the way you do range is you give it a start colon, give it a step colon, and then you give it a stop. And you may or may not equal that stop value depending on how your start and your step work out. Um, and so you can also index a vector using that. So what does that mean? Well, okay, let's start off with a vector A and let's give it the following values. 5, 8, marker 9, uh, 9, 2, 4, 7, 1, 3, 6. So all these have spaces in them, so all these are single digit values. So I can put the commas in here for clarity. Okay? Uh, 8 looks really bad. Um, okay, and remember once again, this is setting up memory locations. So A And then this is memory location A1, uh, this is A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7, and A8, okay? Oh, excuse me, and A9. Okay, so now um, I'm now going to index this with my range operator. So, um, Let's go in here and say, all right, give me A indexed at 1. So this is using a vector to index a vector. So index it at 1, 2, 4. Okay. What that's going to return is the element in A at 1 which is 5, so it's going to return a vector that's been indexed at the first value, which is 5, the second value, which is 8, and the fourth value, which is 2. So it's 5, 8, 2. What if I said, give me A at, now keep in mind, the other, oops, uh, the other way to do the range is to do start colon stop and that assumes that the step is equal to one okay um, and so um, if I did a indexed at two colon six keep in mind two colon six is just like writing a indexed at two Start at 2, stop at 6, step 1 each. So that's like indexing at 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So if I indexed at those at 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, then that's going to give me the vector A indexed at 2 is 8, A indexed at 3 is 9. A indexed at 4 is 2, A indexed at 5 is 4, and A indexed at 6 is 7. So there we go. Wow, marker's really dying here. Uh, and so that would give me uh, this vector there, 8, 9, 2, 4, 7. So what you do is whatever range is in here tells you the addresses to go to. Um, in, in the vector. So if I did A at 2 colon 2 colon 6, that's like doing A at 2 4 6, which will give me 
uh, the vector a at 2 is 8, a at 4 is 2, and a at 6 is 7. So that gives me the vector 8, 2, 7. Um, and then, and I did not mention this in the range discussion, so I'll mention it here, or maybe I did. Um, if you do, um, you can do 3 colon end. So any range will count, however you do the ranges. So this is like saying A uh, from 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And that will return the vector A at 3 is 9, A at 4 is 2, A indexed at 5 is 4, A indexed at 6 is 7, A indexed at 7 is 1, A indexed at 8 is 3, and A indexed at 9 is 6. So that would return that vector. Uh, so um, any vector, any way you want to create a range here just tells you it's like having a list or uh, uh, it's actually having a vector of indices here and you index A at that vector. So you're indexing a vector with a vector. And so that's how the range works. That's how range indexing does. Uh, next up we'll do logical. Um, we'll do logical. So now we're going to index vectors using the range operator. Um, just for reminder, let's remember with the range operator, uh, it works as start, colon, step, colon, stop. And the last one may not be included. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and sort of the shortcut of that, if you only have two values, start, colon, stop, then it is assumed that the step is 1. Okay. Um, all right, with that in mind, let's create a vector A once again. Um, and let's put, let's do direct entry and get a few things in here, 5, 8, and I don't really need the comma, so let's put these in 5, 8, 9, 2, 4, 7, 1, 2, 6. Um, and let's suppress that. Uh, okay, so if we get A indexed at, so before in the last slide we we're doing numerically, we would just index A at, at one like this. Uh, now we're going to index with a vector. So we put a vector in there, and we can index it one, two, four, uh, and do that. Okay, so let's. Let's run that. It's going to ask me to save. I'm going to call this uh, my vect indexing range. Okay. And if you notice, all the right things happened. Um, it gives me an answer because I did not suppress a 582. Uh, if we go over here and look, this is our vector 5892471. 3, 6, and if we index it the first, second, and fourth uh, locations, the first one's 5, the second one's 8, and the fourth one is 2. So it worked out like we, uh, like we wanted. Uh, let's go back and make that equal to B. So next time it runs, we'll get a, a good variable in there. Um, all right, so next up, let's do A index at. Now let's use the range uh, operator here. Uh, let's use... 2 colon 6. Now keep in mind, 2 colon 6, that gives us the vector 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So this is equivalent, if I had to, uh, uh, let's see, C is equivalent as if we had typed in uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. In fact, let's do that. And let's make B equal to A indexed at 2 colon 6. And let's run this. 
see what we get. Well, we get uh, C and D are the same uh, because they're indexing. You go over here to the workspace. Uh, they're indexing at the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So this is 89247, which is what we got here. So very good. Um, <clears throat> next up, uh, we can do things like, let's see, E equals A indexed at 2 colon 2 colon 6. Um, and so what does that say? Well, that says start at 2, end at 6, and do um, every other one, or increment by 2. So it's, that's the equivalent of doing, if I did F, that's the same as doing 2, 4, 6. This is why understanding the range operator is so important, because you're going to do this a lot um, over the course of MATLAB. And so if you look, it's 8, 2, and 7. Look at E and F here, it's 8, 2, and 7. Once again, the second, fourth, and, and sixth element in array A. Okay? All right. Um, and then uh, there's some other things. Oops. Uh, some other things we can do. Uh, we can, and I may... Did not mention that you can also do the end operator uh, with ranges. So uh, let's just say if I said um, you could do G equals A index from 3 colon to the end. That means that would be 3 all the way to the last element. And so if I do this and run it, sure enough, I go from the third element all the way to the last. The third element is 9, 1, 2, 3, and then all the way through the end, which is 6, and that's uh, vector G. Okay. Um, it also works the other way in terms of assignments. Um, I can assign uh, values to a vector. So let's say if I go in here and I say um, A at um, 1, 2, 3, equals 99. Now, there are two things to note here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm saying assign the value 99 to the memory locations in A at index 1, 2, and 3. And so when I run this, it does that. And so now A, the first three elements of A are 99. Okay? Which that's fine. Now let's move on. Let's say if I said instead of do it that way, Let's say, if I say A at the 4th, 5th, and 6th elements, uh, assign that, replace those elements with the vector uh, 101, 102, 103. Right. And I run this one, and that works fine as well. You see, I replaced those three elements in the vector at locations 4, 5, and 6 with the values 101, 102, and 103. So it shows up here in the workspace and down here in the command window. So that works fine. Now, where you get into trouble is if I did something like, let's say if I wanted to do uh, elements 7, 8, and 9, and I wanted to give those the values uh, negative 1, uh, or let's just say not negative 1, let's say uh, 0 and 1. Now, we're going to get an error here. Uh, so when I click this, it gives me an error. The problem is, is that if you notice here, I've tried to replace three elements with only two. And that doesn't work. That doesn't match for MATLAB. It's got to be either a one element, or what we call a scalar, or the number of elements that you're replacing have to equal the number of elements in your replacement vector. So here, uh, we were assigning the same number to all three, and here, we're replacing these three elements with these three elements here, right? Uh, this line 14 gives an error 
because I'm trying to replace three elements with two elements and MATLAB doesn't know what to do. So that's something. So the, the, the rule is, is it has to be a scalar like this. Uh, this is called a scalar value, uh, which is just uh, only one value. And then, or uh, they have to be of the same size. And that comes up over and over again in MATLAB. Uh, this generates an error because it's not the same size, nor is it a scalar. Um, so that's a little bit extra that wasn't in the uh, onboard uh, stuff that I just talked about, uh, but we'll see that coming up as we, as we proceed forward.